Shalom and welcome to Gleaning the Scriptures. Thank you for being here. In today's video, we're going to be going over Job together. We're going to be going over some of the things that he said that don't quite fall in line with the common narrative, but there they are, plainly in the text. Furthermore, we're going to be going over something that God himself, the Creator, the Almighty, the Blessed One, who blesses all and creates all. Something that he said about Job that is commonly overlooked. Stay tuned, and I look forward to you being manumitted from the shackles and chains of the enemy to have a more godly viewpoint of his scriptures. Here at Gleaning the Scriptures, we labor to make sure that you do not lack knowledge. As it says in Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. There's no reason for you to perish. So basically, Job's entire argument, the whole book of Job, can be summed up in something the young man Elihu said at the very end. At the end, Elihu got angry because Job's friends had judged Job but found no reason why. And he was angry at Job because, in Elihu's words, Job considered himself more righteous than God. And in this speech, as he spoke up, angry with both parties, Elihu, he says this, Job, surely you have spoken in my hearing, and I have heard the sound of your words, saying, I am pure, without transgression, I am innocent, and there is no iniquity in me. Yet he, God, finds occasion against me. He counts me as his enemy. He puts my feet in the stocks. He watches all my paths. There's that sum up of Job's argument. And then this is what Elihu has to say about it. Look, in this you are not righteous. I will answer you, for God is greater than man. Why do you contend with him? Okay, so there's the whole idea behind Job. Now, we're going to move forward and we're going to prove Elihu wrong. Showing that Job did not think that he was more righteous than God and showing that Job did not hold himself in higher accord than God. Now, Job had an awful lot of complaining that he did, and rightfully so. He was within the strong grip of the enemy himself. He had lost his business, his family, his homes, his integrity, his honor, and his comfort within his own skin. Um, well, the previous things all in one day, and then his comfort within his own skin uh, weeks. I think it was actually a, a few months later while he was wallowing in an ash heap of, of sorrow and uh, uh, satanic um, disturbances. So yeah, Job was complaining about the current condition that he was in. But even within this complaining, Job said things like this. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. Here's another thing that Job says. Though he slay me, I will trust him. Could you imagine that? Even just being friends or rubbing shoulders with somebody who has that kind of trust in the Lord? This isn't like he had a bad day at work or he's going through a divorce with his wife. This is the man's entire life being taken from him and then full demonic oppression being a cloud that completely engulfs him for months. And he says, though he slay me, I will trust him. Holy cow. Here's another thing that Job said. When he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. This is Job putting God way far above him. He's basically saying, God is above me. He sees everything that I do and everything that I'm going through. God makes a single turn sometimes and I can't see it. It's because he's greater than I am. Here's another wonderful thing that Job said. This is something that 
any of us can use in our pockets of wisdom. Have you ever been in a circumstance where somebody is very blatantly in the wrong and you have to tiptoe around this thing in order to keep the atmosphere from falling apart? Well, that's because of this truth that Job said. How forceful are right words. Isn't that interesting? This little one is followed up with, but what does your arguing get done? Mm, I love it. And lastly, Job says, who has hardened himself against him, God, and prospered? Job also describes how precious wisdom is, then asks where to find it. God, the Elohim of our patriarchs, is the answer. That last one's a sum up um, that I wasn't able to find when going through the book of Job to find that particular uh, bit of notes that I have over the last few months. These are very interesting points here. Now, let's look. So those are, those are Job's sayings. We know his argument. That's all well and good. We know that his friends were trying to say, look, Job, you can't be better than God. You did something. You need to repent, you wicked man. Just repent and stop fighting with God. Here come his friends who wanted to comfort him, ended up accusing him. And instead of comforting him, they became part of the enemy's schemes. That's what it seems like, yeah? So what does God have to say about all this? He's the ultimate judge. He's the one we should be listening to. Well, in Job chapter 42, we have this nugget. Verses 7 through 8. So uh, this is the Lord. The Almighty speaking to Eliphaz, the Temanite, one of the three. He says, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly. Because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Uh, so, apparently Job has stood firm. In the first videos we see that God says Job is blameless, Job is upright, and in Job 1.22 it says, in all this, Job has committed no sin, nor has he charged God with wrong. It doesn't seem like uh, Job has wavered from his integrity here at the end, God says the same thing. Job is solid as a rock, just like Yeshua, Messiah. And this is important to understand because Job is a picture of Yeshua. If you take a minute and pause this video and look over those, and even maybe write them down and study them, oh my goodness, it is a beautiful study. Way more precious than gold, the wisdom in that. I hope you've enjoyed this video at the end here. I've written up a little, um, a little poetry that I would like for you to hear. That kind of connects Job. Well, it, it doesn't kind of. It connects Job and the Messiah. You would know this because you've, you understand the context, but this would be very, very tangential for somebody who's hearing this to know that it is uh, a connection of Job and the Messiah. So have a great day and enjoy these words. Was Messiah a sinner because he had nowhere to lay his head? Was Yeshua caught in the snares of transgression when his hands were stilled and bleeding? Did the Almighty find iniquity in him when the Lord bruised the shepherd and scattered the sheep? Is man holy as he is holy? Do dogs not lap up their own vomit and pigs return to the mud pit after being cleaned? The Lord is Elohim. He is just. Snakes are bruised under the heel of his obedient children. Yet, on a throne, he sits alone by himself.
click the share button, click copy link, and if you're on a phone, send that off as a text message to your friends. Not only will it bless me, it'll bless you as it has, and of course, I think they'll appreciate it too. Shalom!